So yeah, this journey started around a year ago with the Great North Air Ambulance Service who asked us to come up and trial this concept and it works so well that we've spent the time in the interim alongside all the other things we do in gravity actually developing the equipment further um, so it can fly you know, faster and further for longer uh, and also training up some of the paramedics as well. Jamie, yeah, that was brilliant. Great job. You, you had much better power control that time. You're looking really stable and yeah. fluid. You do notice if you choose a, an area to land with lots yeah. of stuff. It's funny, people think it might set fire to anything. You're never going to set fire to anything, but it does blow it everywhere, like yeah. landing a helicopter. Yeah. But that was great. I yeah, mean, your, felt super comfortable. Your uh, stability and stuff. Felt actually. safe the whole time. Uh, yeah. Just getting that power setting at the start yeah. when you, so you've got maximum sort of maneuverability yeah. with the effect, with the vector of the thrust, so you yeah. can adjust the, the altitude and your speed yeah, yeah. and your uh, sort of heading quite easily. Brilliant. Um, but yeah, felt more loads that. I mean, it's amazing. From six days of training, right, over yeah. the last two yeah. weeks spread out. I mean, yeah, look what you uh, can do. Great job. It's great. It's like I say, it's it's another big milestone and huge dimension. Potentially yeah. operationalizing this. Absolutely. To, to get up to the top of hell valley and save a life in three and a half exactly. minutes. Yeah. So if, yeah. You can, yeah. if you can do this, it's really not much of a yeah. progression to then just cater with different terrains and stuff. It's a great job, super job. Cool. Cool. Excellent. Thanks, man. Yeah, really good job. Cheers. Yeah, so where normally I work through the day on a helicopter, obviously on, on days like today where we've got sort of low lying mist and fog, the helicopter's going to struggle to sort of get there and get up there. And you know, there's a bit of a gap between uh, what the aircraft can achieve uh, getting us there in, in poor weather and us getting there hiking up on foot, uh, deploying from a car. Um, and hopefully, you know, this gives us the opportunity to look at other options to get care to those patients quickly. Initially, when I was told about this, I thought it's impossible. And then it starts to become possible. And then actually, you start to see the trials of what's achievable. And now I, I feel like that there, there is a, a place where this can benefit patients. So fingers crossed. So in terms of practicality and applicability to critical care environments that are very challenging like this, uh, if you think of the cost of a paramedic helicopter and all the crew involved and the maintenance and everything, actually this is a fraction of that. So actually I, I have no doubt that it has its place in the sort of portfolio of equipment that these kind of professionals have at their fingertips.
So really the next stages are all around refining uh, the, the skills that Jamie's got to fly here. And rather than me flying it as a test pilot, actually him flying it to the point where he can run alongside a conventional medical response and seek to assist a critical care patient even faster than the conventional response by helicopter or by vehicle.